Diabetic ketoacidosis is a medical emergency and requires immediate treatment to prevent life-threatening complications. As the name suggests, there are three cardinal biochemical features that are the basis of diagnosing diabetic ketoacidosis. The first feature is hyperglycemia of more than 11 millimole per liter that will be approximately 200 milligram per deciliter. The second feature is ketosis having ketonemia of more than 3 millimole per liter or ketonuria of more than 2 plus on standard urine stick. The third feature is metabolic acidosis that can be assessed by venous bicarbonate level less than 15 millimole per liter or blood pH of less than 7.3. The pathogenesis of DKA is discussed in another video. I will add the link in description. Diabetic ketoacidosis usually develops slowly. Initial symptoms include being very thirsty, that is polydipsia, and frequent urination, that is polyuria. If it is untreated, severe symptoms appear quickly, such as nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, muscle aches and stiffness, lethargy, and dry skin and mouth. The signs of diabetic ketoacidosis on the other hand are dehydration, hypotension, air hunger that can be seen as small breathing, smell of acetone in breath, hypothermia, drowsiness and even coma. After initial clinical assessment is done, you will not delay starting the treatment of in intravenous fluid and insulin replacement. You will begin with inserting intravenous cannula and you will infuse 1 liter of 0.9% sodium chloride over 1 hour if systolic blood pressure is more than 90 mm of mercury. If systolic blood pressure is less than 90 mm of mercury, then you will give repeated bolus of 500 ml of normal saline over 10 to 15 minutes maximum 2 liter of normal saline and then you will reassess the blood pressure then you will start intravenous insulin if infusion 50 unit human soluble insulin in 50 ml of normal saline at the rate of 0.1 unit per kilogram per hour after that, you will get the essential investigations done. That include blood test for urea and electrolytes, blood glucose levels, arterial or venous blood gas for bicarbonate, potassium and pH assessment. Then there is urine analysis for ketones. During first 24 hours of management of diabetic ketoacidosis, regular clinical and biochemical reviews are needed. For that, you can establish a monitoring schedule. Hourly monitoring will mainly focus on the parameters of blood glucose, ketone testing, urine output, Along with these, you will also do clinical monitoring of vitals and there will be investigation of venous bicarbonates and potassium. Other than that, you will go for some investigations once, complete blood count, ECG, chest x-ray, blood cultures to treat any precipitating cause and to rule out underlying infection. Then comes the emergency management. You will commence insulin treatment as already mentioned that is 0.1 unit per kilogram per hour. 
and you will continue subcutaneous basal insulin if already usually taken by the patient. For intravenous fluid, you will commence 0.9% sodium chloride initially by keeping blood pressure into consideration. You will give 1 liter of normal saline over 1 hour, then another 1 liter of normal saline over 2 hours, then another 1 liter of normal saline over next 2 hours, then another 1 liter of normal saline over next 4 hours. Insulin and this much intravenous fluid can obviously cause hypoglycemia. In order to avoid hypoglycemia, you will add 10% glucose at the rate of 125 ml per hour intravenously when blood glucose levels fall below 14 millimole per liter that will be around 252 milligram per deciliter. Your hourly monitoring chart will tell when to add glucose. You will also consider potassium chloride infusion according to lab reports. If potassium level is in the range of 3.5 to 5.5, you will add 40 millimole of potassium chloride in 1 liter of normal saline intravenously. If potassium level is below 3.5 millimole per liter, you will take senior review because in this case additional potassium of more than 40 millimole per liter is necessary. If potassium level is more than 5.5, then you don't need to replace potassium. At this point, you should assess the patient for complications of treatment that are fluid overload and cerebral edema. When ketonemia and acidosis have resolved, which means blood ketones less than 0.3 millimole per liter and bicarbonates more than 18 millimole per liter. Then you will initiate subcutaneous insulin with advice from diabetes team. You will give a subcutaneous injection of short acting insulin 30 minutes prior to stopping intravenous insulin. This is called overlapping. You will encourage your patient to eat and drink. There are some important points that I would like to mention here. During management, consider urinary catheterization if patient is anuric for 3 hours or there is urinary incontinence or if patient is unconscious. Also consider nasogastric intubation if there is persistent vomiting or drowsiness. After recovery, refer your patient to diabetes specialist team to initiate subcutaneous insulin and further review and follow up.